Hello, welcome to my channel, or welcome back if you've been here before. My name is Beth Ann. Today I wanted to talk, hopefully briefly, about um, Across the Green Grass Fields by Shannon uh, McGuire. And this book is, um, oh goodness, I want to say it's the sixth book in the Wayward Children series um, by Shauna McGuire, um, but it's actually pretty uh, standalone. Um, the other previous books had some continuing characters, but this one kind of starts over essentially with a new character who doesn't interact with any of the previous characters in the series. Um, so it'd be, it's a really good entry point um, if you're not familiar with the series but are curious to check out her work and um, would rather read something super new as opposed to something that came out um, five or six years ago. Um, but anyway, if you um, want to know more about the series in general, either after watching my review or just because you've always heard a little bit about it, um, Josh over at Josh's Bookish Voyage has a really great video uh, talking about the entire series, which he reread, um, I think, over the month of December, kind of leading up to the new release of um, this book. So I will link to his review video in the cards, whichever side of me that's on, because I still don't understand this whole whether I'm a mirror image thing or not. Um, but anyway, yeah, so back to this book. So um, in this book, we follow a main character, Reagan, who is kind of on the cusp of adolescence. And like all of Shauna McGuire's main characters, there's always some reason why the main character feels like a misfit um, in kind of our, our very standard normative um, culture. And these books are all portal fantasy. And so in this book, um, Reagan, uh, you know, is feeling like a misfit, and I won't exactly say why because I really liked the buildup um, and and how that was revealed. Um, but she's feeling like a misfit. She's feeling a lot of pressure to fit into a very idealized, girly version of um, of kind of femininity, and that doesn't really fit her, her personality. Um, it doesn't really fit kind of her development going into adolescence. And as we all know, kids can be really cruel to each other. And so it's starting to really play out in kind of vicious ways in schoolyard uh, politics. Um, and so after one particularly particularly stressful encounter, she runs away. Um, and this is where the portal fantasy comes into p place um, in this series, all of the characters as they run away encounter a doorway um, of some kind. Um, and the doorway asks, be sure. Um, and they're kids, they don't really know what that means, but um, each kid enters the doorway. So Reagan enters the doorway and is whisked away to a fantastical world. Um, in her case, it's dominated by kind of every mythical creature that is part horse. So it's got centaurs and kelpies and silkies and, you know, all kinds of things from mythical folklore. Um, and it's a, it's a safe place where she can essentially be herself. But the really cool thing about Shauna McGuire, I shouldn't have used the word safe, is because, um, you know, we all know as adults that the world is not safe. It's particularly unsafe for children. And of course, adults try to, try to cushion that. Um, but one of the beautiful things of McGuire and why this book, why these books are so attractive, I think, to an adult audience. I started reading these as, as an adult. They started coming out when I was in my mid-late 20s, um, is, is that they don't flinch away at all from the danger of the real world. They don't cushion kids at all. And that's not to say um, that like some bad things happen to them, but it's but it's bad things more in the emotional sense um, of well, growing up is kind of bad for everybody in some sense, right? Going through puberty and everything. Um, it's rarely fun. Um, but yeah, it's just it's just very real and very human. Um, and she'll even have, you know, the, the, there is a kind of a narrative voice to these books. The narrator isn't necessarily a character, but does have, um, I don't know what the term is for, for this literary device, I guess, but the narrator will kind of half address the reader occasionally. Um, with just kind of pointing out some of the really dark aspects of, of growing up um, or the, the dark things that could happen or are so close to happening or something um, to, to children. And um, yeah, and I feel like saying that, maybe that would be a big turnoff for people. It's not, these aren't like scary books. Um, I don't know. But uh, yeah, they're just, they're just really, really real. Um, and, you know, I think, like, they are YA books, but they just speak so much to 
me as an adult, you know, partly remembering my own experience going through, um, you know, that turning from a kid into a teenager into an adult. Um, but yeah, also just kind of the general, like, aspects of humanity that kids share with adults. You know, she really treats the kids in her stories as, you know, kind of full people. Um, and, you know, they just approach, uh, approach things from, from more of a, a kid view, but like, they're, you know, they're, they're full people. They're not, they're not kind of reduced or infantilized, I guess, um, in a lot of ways. So, um, yeah, so these books are just incredible. Um, and so, yeah, in this book, I, I am speaking a lot in generalities, um, but, uh, in this book, um, Reagan, the main, the main character, um, you know, is thrown into this world and there's a history, there's a history in all the worlds of humans kind of coming through a portal. And in this world, humans are supposed to, um, appear only when there's a problem that the world is about to face a really big problem. And so the human, the human arriving is kind of this big, exciting thing and a potential harbinger for doom for the characters, um, in here. And so part of the story is, um, does Reagan kind of accept fate or not, which carries over from the problems that she was facing in, um, in her original life. Um, and so there's, there's kind of a cool play there of, do you just kind of accept what people expect of you? Or do you find ways to claim your own space and your own individuality? Um, and so Reagan does that for most of the book, um, which is really wonderful. Um, and then the, there's a cool bit at the end, um, cause kind of fate, uh, does eventually catch up to her. Um, we all grow up eventually. So in this magical world, fate kind of catches up to her and she does have to go fulfill kind of her role as the human. Um, and then there's kind of an interesting, um, interesting twist that still follows that same line of like claiming your own destiny. And um, even if it feels like there's no way out, the thing that's expected of you or planned for you, um, you're still able to find a crack and, um, and forge your own path. So that's kind of the whole, the whole theme of this book that I took away anyway. Um, so this was a five-star book for me. I think this Wayward Children series is probably my favorite series of all time, just because it is so consistently well-written. The theming is so good. They're so poignant, um, because Shauna McGuire just like, effortlessly inhabits um, kind of that uh, that growing up space in a way that's really appealing as an adult reader um, and as a parent. Um, although the one main theme, especially with this book, like Reagan is gone from her parents for, you know, she just like leaves and the narrator is like, and then she was gone for six years. <laughs> and as a parent, I'm like, oh God, no. Um, and in, in some of the Wayward Children books, it's, you know, the parents, um, they're, they're never really portrayed as bad guys. They're just people who don't quite get it. Um, and in some of the books, they, uh, they kind of don't get it in more egregious ways than others. In this book, her parents are, are good. You know, it's, it's a little bit hard, um, to, uh, you know, the choices her parents made seem reasonable. Um, there's not a clear, uh, way that they could have, necessarily been better and Reagan's whole um storyline and character development is just like it's so dependent on her peers and so that's partly a scary thing of like as a parent that's something like I can control my own behavior and my own responses to my daughter um growing into an individual and I'm just discovering who she is every day and that will continue you know forever I have no control over that but I can control my response to that but I can't control her peer environment um, and so that is, uh, is pretty scary, um, you know, and is something that, um, you know, we'll have to have a lot of conversations about and a lot of thought about as she grows over, grows older. Um, so anyway, now I'm just babbling, but this was a five-star book for me. This is probably my favorite series ever in existence. Um, and if you want to know more about this series, you should go check out, um, Josh's video that I put in the cards earlier and I'll, I'll have his channel down in the description box, um, as well. So with that, I will um, sign off. Thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed already, and I hope I will see you around my channel in the future. Thanks. Bye.